Hi there, and thanks for joining me. Today we're going to continue in our education of project management. Now last week we reviewed the project documents that you need to take a look at in preparation for managing your job, finishing with schedules, which is the topic for the whole of our discussion today, so stay tuned. Now developing and managing your schedule can be a difficult and sometimes frustrating process. And this is because the parties involved often have different and competing interests of what they want to see in the timeline. For example, general contractors want to see steel delivered and erected as early as possible, giving them both a good demonstration and momentum on the job site. Whereby production, more objectively, wants to see dates that give them comfort and latitude and managing the other projects and responsibilities that they already have on their plate. And you as the project manager want to see commitments to milestones and completion dates that you feel comfortable are going to be hit. And the problem with trying to discuss these matters is that everyone treats schedules as if they're static, when actually they're far more dynamic. Being able to respond to and incorporate schedule revisions is crucial to managing your job well and requires a lot of leadership and interpersonal skill. But sadly, today's instruction is not a course on team building and emotional intelligence. Rather, we're going to focus on three aspects of your schedule, which are initial development, coordination, and management. Now I should first note that the scheduling program I'll be using in our example today is Microsoft Project, which is by no means the only one available on the market. Others commonly used include P6 from Primavera and Phoenix CPM. And each of these programs come with their own features and functions that they offer, but everything we're going to cover today is not exclusive to any one, meaning whichever scheduling program you're using, you'll be able to do the same of what we cover today. And with that said, let's take a look at developing your initial schedule. Now, building a preliminary schedule is a lot like a brainstorming activity that you used to do in grade school. This isn't going to be your finished piece, but the objective here is to get all of your ideas on paper, and we're going to organize them later in the coordination stage. And the key to building any truly successful schedule is in the details. You should endeavor to identify and then itemize every single step and process in the development of your project. Now, after performing the document review that we discussed last week, yourself and your team should know this project and your company well enough to determine what those steps are going to be. And those are going to change on every single job, depending on your scope of work and requirements. But I've built a generic project schedule for us to review today. After identifying the list of tasks on your projects, the next step is to simply assign the duration for each one and the relationship between them, if any. Falling back on my comment earlier on the competing interests of schedules, your preliminary schedule usually appeals to your production staff because you haven't yet coordinated this with the needs and expectations of the general contractor. Rather, you're just evaluating resources without limitations as a starting point. And on that point, after you've pulled all this together, you now have a topic of discussion with the general contractor of coordinating schedules. So let's take a look at that. Welcome back. And now that we've built our preliminary and I'll say idealistic schedule, let's take a look at coordinating this with the actual needs of the project, which might look different than what you came up with. And the balance here is finding cuts that you can make without giving commitments that you can't keep. And if you're not willing to be honest with yourself, then I can't help you with that. But I will say that accomplishing this takes some resolve because you're now mediating between those two. If the date that you're trying to coordinate with the general contractor is towards the end of your list of tasks, such as a hook date or the start of erection, or a total completion date, backing into a completion date is a process known as a backwards pass. But we'll get more into that in the month of September when we take all four weeks to go over the process of scheduling. 
Now, I will say that if you need to find cuts in your schedule, you really only have three options to make that happen. And the first one is to reevaluate your task durations. If you have too much fluff in any one of these and you know that you can get it done faster, well, you need to cut that out. Self-evaluation can feel like suicide to some because you're adding pressure and commitments to your own company. But it's important at this stage that you maintain a competitive mindset. You should focus rather on how well your company can perform, which requires strategy, and can even make this process fun. Now don't take what I'm saying as a suggestion to try and make the impossible happen. I'm not telling you to disregard the realism of your initial schedule if it is indeed accurate. I'm only suggesting that you reevaluate how much your company can produce in a given time frame when push comes to shove. And your second option is overlapping tasks. If any one or portion of these can be done concurrently, you need to take a look at how you can compress these. Take for example, you may not have all of the shop drawings you need from your detailer, but it doesn't mean that you can't start fabricating from the drawings you do have in hand. Similarly, you may not have all of the steel fabricated and out of your shop, but it doesn't mean that you can't start delivering and erecting the steel that you do have done. Doing this shows effort and cooperation with the general contractor and you're thinking outside the box. And your final option is outsourcing. If your company doesn't have the time, staff, or resources to meet the schedule that you need, you're gonna have to hire out some help. Now this is gonna erode into your profit margin, but it's gonna help you avoid schedule delays and liquidated damages that might have robbed you of that or worse anyways. And after you've done this and you've reached an amicable schedule agreement with your employer, the remaining duty that you have with your schedule is to manage it. Meaning that you need to drive, keeping each one of these tasks happening and on time. But additionally, and perhaps more importantly, you need to document schedule impacts and revisions. Whenever someone or something alters the course of your schedule, you should note that in a schedule update. As I mentioned at the beginning of our video, schedules are dynamic. These are living documents that should begin with expressing how you intended to do the job and finish with journaling how the project actually came to completion. And this can sometimes feel like the easiest and the hardest part of scheduling, but it's critically important that you do it. Documenting the events that impact your schedule is a duty that you should take upon yourself. And you can be sure that you're going to want this information when it comes to billing for your retention and settling change orders. So the lesson here is be sure to do it. Thanks for tuning in today. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to give it a thumbs up and then check out our website where you can subscribe to receive videos like this every single week, bringing you only the best in steel construction education. And while you're there, be sure to check out our list of courses, providing you a deeper and more intensive study on topics just like this one. You see here at the SBC Group, it's our mission to help you know the most so that you can do your best. And finally, if you should have any questions or concerns about where you're going to spend eternity and you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, feel free to reach out to me and I'll be glad to help you with that too. Thank you and God bless.